<laughs> Sorry, it's kind of funny how actually I'm, I'm quite nervous to be here right now. And it's strange how I, in, in my experience, I've gone into rooms that made pitches to boards for millions of dollars um, to support their <clears throat> sports organizations and programs. And now, when I look back at the, at the past uh, my career, I guess you could say, um, it seems like everything has been culminating, culminating for me to this uh, moment here. So just to give you a quick uh, introduction, uh, my name is Jeremy Reno, uh, uh, born and raised here in Windsor, Ontario, uh, graduate level education, 12 years sport management uh, experience, uh, in over five countries at the amateur, uh, collegiate, professional, and international levels. Uh, work for organizations such as the Andrews Entertainment Group uh, for professional hockey in Europe, NHL, NFL, University of Western Ontario, University of Michigan, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's funny how uh, along that way with everything that I've involved with, um, there's been some times even in marketing rules, well, I'll, I'll finish a project and I'll, actually I'll email it to Marge, wherever I am in the world, and just, is this gender equity, is this really, <laughs> and just send it, okay, we can send a print. <laughs> All right, so uh, first I'd like to thank uh, both Marge and Elaine uh, for allowing me the chance to speak here tonight about a proposed vision for uh, Regional Sport Council by 2014. All right, um, <clears throat> just with that said, uh, just putting it to you, what are some things that you think of when I say the word sport council? What comes to your mind? Structure. Okay, very good. Multi-sport. Multi-sport, excellent. Collaboration. Oh, Accessibility. Great. Yep. One more. Policy. Policy, excellent. All right. Um, so just to give you a little bit of the scope of sport councils, uh, sport councils have been around for decades now. Um, the oldest sport council is in Edmonton, and the closest sport council is in London. There's approximately 20 sport councils throughout the province of Ontario, and over 50 throughout the nation. Now, councils do a myriad of things, and it really depends on their culture, where they're situated. Some are housed within the parks and rec departments for their municipality. Others are self-sustainable. For example, London Sport Council is a self-sustainable organization that does receive some, some funding from the City of London, however, it is a standalone model, whereas the Sport Tourism part is housed within Tourism London, where there is a Sport Tourism Manager. All right. uh, other organizations, such as Mississauga Sport Council, the Sport Tourism Person or Sport Council Person is located right within the Parks Department uh, within Mississauga. Um, <clears throat> now, the history of Sport Council in Windsor Essex County is kind of unique, and it was a little bit interesting because I received new information from Marge, um, and I don't want to say the year, but I'll just say back, back when Dr. Moriarty and her were working on a number of things, uh, they actually proposed a, uh, an idea for a sport council, and they, they found some challenges with that. Uh, since that time, uh, pardon me, an individual I worked with at Agnew, who taught me a lot about fundraising, um, had proposed and championed one in the 80s, but it never got off the ground. The closest thing we had to a sport council was the Windsor Essex Sport Tourism Alliance in 2005. I was actually part of that, doing some research, and we were funded by Trillium. Uh, the person that was running the organization at the time thought he would be absorbed by the city, so wasn't looking at a self-sustainable model. And then, unfortunately, I don't think he prepared for it uh, when the day came when funding was not. Also, there wasn't a long-term uh, vision and strategic plan in place. Um, so what do you think some of the benefits are of having uh, all community sports under one group. Awareness. Oh, awareness, good. Yeah, just sporting events coming to your facilities. facilities. Yep, yep. Coordination. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I would say coordination. Yep. Excellent. There's power of the branding and buying and, and recognition of sports mm -hmm. today. Yep, excellent. Time saving. And I'm sorry? Time saving. Yep. Excellent. So what we're doing is we're in, uh, increasing efficiency, uh, increasing capacity, reducing waste. Right? Now, if we take a look at, for example, um, the hockey community, and I, it just first thing came to mind because I was looking at uh, our chair here and I was thinking October best. All right, but if we look at the hockey community in the whole and we look at, for example, uh, the arenas that were all built in the, in the region over the past 10 years, everyone, in my opinion, went crazy building twin pad arenas, multi-purpose arenas. But did, everyone, did anyone ask the question, what are our participation rates? Are they increasing or are they decreasing? Like right now, we built something for today, but five years from now, are they going to be white elephants? Uh, just over two weeks ago, I sat in a town of Lakeshore Council meeting, and I, I looked at their design for a new multi-purpose, multiple pad arena. It was beautiful, and the first question I had at the top of my head, okay, have you, have you looked at your statistics? 
right when I went home, I emailed counsel um, and said, before you do anything, just my personal opinion, check out Parks and Rec, look at their statistics, and before you build anything, if it suits Bell River, fantastic, but look at a bigger scope and down the road. I did see multiple pads, which is great, but then again, you look at supply and demand down the road. Now, one thing that they could do, and not saying this is the way it should go, but uh, <coughs> um, with sport council down the road in mind, being involved with recreational facilities and competitive venues, they could look at, okay, well, if they're gonna build a three, four pad arena, if two pads is enough and there's a sustainable program for years to come, maybe instead of building the extra two pads, they look at building Olympic ice for seating. Because then in the region, we have a place for figure skating. So all girls that participate in figure skating, and males as well, have a dedicated facility to go to. And then on a larger scale, we look at uh, hosting events down the road. Um, so with the different organizations you're with, clubs, sport groups, what are some of the needs that you uh, face day to day? Yeah. At a lower cost. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Because the parks and rec is very expensive. You need to use it for your one event. Uh, we do races, walkers, runners around the county. Yeah. We're looking for something, so we need to have a place to have 200, 400 people coming in and out for more. And it's very, very costly for the charities that are trying to make yeah. money. Okay. Very good. Excellent. One more. One more. Resources in general. Yep, resources in general. Or, yep. So different organizations are in different positions, right? When we look at the challenges that organizations face on a daily level, some will have governance issues, some will have marketing communications, some will have fundraising uh, difficulties, others will have uh, challenges in hosting events, others will have challenges in organizing and motivating, and as well as deploying their resources such as volunteers. This is where a sport council, and this is one of the things I've looked at for my research, that we want to do, which empowers the front line uh, at the grassroots level. Right now, other sport councils, a lot of them lobby for support for different organizations. They influence change, but then one of the things that they have to actually, what I'm proposing to do, is really help the front line, uh, find out what the needs are of the organizations, look to increase collaboration, look to help organizations develop themselves. The more efficient you are on the front line, the better the PSOs will be, the better the national organizations will be. Having been a national general manager, it's easy for us to look at a province and say, okay, Manitoba complied, Vancouver complied, everyone complies. And then at the provincial level, they're all looking at, okay, we have to get our money from the government, we have to make sure our participation grows, we have to fulfill our LTA, long-term athlete development uh, model, we have to increase coaching. But then when it comes to the club level, they don't really have the resources uh, to use a metaphor, go to war. All right? So, with one of the things, uh, and starting to tie it together, pardon me, is how can laws benefit from an organization like this? Uh, right away, <clears throat> uh, when I became involved uh, by email, I, I met with uh, both Elaine and March for two hours, <laughs> and we talked about sport council. From there, I already introduced them to the board for Windsor Lady Expos and for Oktoberfest. Uh, with that said, we worked collaboratively together to develop an uh, internship opportunity uh, for a uh, sport tourism research analyst uh, from the kinesiology department at the University of Windsor. And uh, from there, we specified that uh, the preference will be given to a female due to the nature of the event and also to advance opportunities for women in sport. Now, the benefits of having a sport, tour sport tourism economic assessment model, STEAM study, is the fact that we can identify at the end of the year what the value of the tournament was. We know what it does for competitive and social and uh, uh, growth of women in sport, but from a, also from the other perspective, we can say annually this tournament brings in X amount of dollars, it creates this many jobs, it affects this many businesses. That will help for future grant applications, sponsorship packages, and have it in our promotional materials. Pardon me. <clears throat> now to tie it into another level, which uh, my colleagues on Oktoberfest had uh, alluded to, uh, is coaching. All right? um, back in February, I was in the coaches conference in uh, Markham, Ontario. I remember seeing a, a, a couple of baseball coaches from Windsor, and I just thought of it, wow. They're coming here, they're paying probably about $100 to participate, then they have a hotel room a night, that's another $100 times two, that's $300, plus their gas, it's $400, plus other incidentals, food, et cetera, so they're up to $500. Now, if we worked in collaboration with laws and Oktoberfest, what we could do is partner with Coaches Association of Ontario, apply for grant funding, and during the week of the uh, Oktoberfest 6 tournament, <laughs> 
they're gonna they're gonna get mad at me if I propose it now. But uh, <laughs> I'd love to have a NCCP uh, community initiation and competitive coaching. screening coaching at Oktoberfest. <laughs> right. With that said, now we make it economically achievable for more organizations such as Sun Parlor to send more coaches to get trained. They're not paying five hundred plus dollars for one coach to get trained. They can take that money, pay for one coach to or uh, up to five coaches to get trained, which increases more capacity for women to assume leadership roles, all right? Um, with that, taking it a step further, um, it's all about collaboration. So right now I know um, we mentioned about uh, uh, celebrating and educating for breast cancer awareness. What we can do is partner with Arts Council of Windsor Region, which we are in the process of doing, and uh, engage the arts community to participate in Hoptoberfest. And one area would be through the volunteer uniforms. If they um, create and design the volunteer uniforms, and also if we have it in pink, then we've achieved uh, education and awareness for breast cancer. And also we can apply for funding through Arts Council of Windsor Region to pay for <laughs> the uniforms. So it's, there's a collaboration there already. Taking it a step further, um, this one here, I hope not to scare the Hoptoberfest board because I'm on the board, so hopefully I won't get booted off. <laughs> but uh, in, the, in the years to come, right now there's a 96 team uh, maximum cap on the tournament. Uh, with that said, what we can look to do is expand the tournament throughout the region of uh, Windsor Essex County to all the different arenas. Um, it will take a little bit of more work, but there is an opportunity to do that. Not to offend the other individuals that are in AAA hockey, what we do is we work with municipalities to ensure that they reserve time for sport development through practices with the clubs. This way you still have sport development, and now we can start breaking out the divisions and increasing the number of teams per division. In a longer year, strategic plan in five years, uh, we can again look to partner with Laws and Trillium uh, and have the team, now this is going to get a little bit scary, <laughs> have the teams go over two, uh, two weekends, 16 division or 16 teams per division, 192 teams, mm -hmm. uh, then we can create an opportunity for Trillium to hire an event manager, uh, could be a, a Lancet women's hockey player, an aspiring sport administrator, and then we can uh, work with Twepi as, as well because now we're uh, increasing economic impact, we're increasing awareness, we're creating the capacity for women to develop uh, leadership roles and all the, everything that comes with uh, playing sports, competition, socialization, and uh, just development of uh, sports in general. Um, so with that said, uh, right now when it comes to timelines, where we're at, so we've conducted a study, uh, we've... Uh,